and welcome to the video this week on Danny B Talks on YouTube. If you're new here, I do a variety of videos here, mostly focused on the sport of NASCAR. If you feel you'll enjoy that, then go ahead and hit that subscribe button and click the notification bell to know when I upload in the future. Last week, I made a video on five NASCAR drivers that you probably forgot about, and this week, I'm going to talk about five more NASCAR drivers that you probably forgot about as well. So, let's get right into it, shall we? Kevin Conway. Okay, maybe you do remember him only for his controversial career-long sponsor, Extends. Extends is a product that, well, cures erectile dysfunction for men. However, Conway's racing career offered nothing worthy of remembering, really. Conway drove for a number of teams in three of NASCAR's top series, primarily between 2009 to 2011. He drove for teams such as Front Row Motorsports, Nimco, and Robbie Gordon Racing in Cup. Wait. Robbie Gordon? Isn't that the same guy that was placed on probation for attacking Kevin Conway in 2011? Yep, it sure was. Kevin Conway's career has definitely been a strange one to say the least. So, what about on the track? How did he do there? Well, Conway only ran one race in trucks in 2009, completed 150 laps, which sounds like he stayed on the lead lap, but he finished in 19th. He has 34 Xfinity Series starts between 7 years, completed 5,665 laps, but that's it. No poles or top 10s, an average start of 30th, and an average finish of 27th. His cup career looks fairly similar, too. 31 starts between 3 years, 6,900 laps completed, 1 lap led, but that's it. Average start of 38th, and an average finish of 33rd. He was, however, the 2010 NASCAR Sprint Cup Series Rookie of the Year. But that's not saying much. The only other rookie in 2010 was Terry Cook, who ran a whopping three races in 2010. It's safe to say that Kevin Conway is quite possibly one of NASCAR's biggest flops ever. However, since leaving the world of NASCAR, Kevin Conway has found a lot of success in the world of Lamborghini in North America in the Super Trofeo series leading to the GT3 program. Doing this, he became the 2014 Super Trofeo World Champion and a two-time North American Super Trofeo series champion. So maybe there's positives to Kevin's career still left in him. He has also said he'd like to one day return to NASCAR, but we will see if that happens. <laughs> James Busher James Busher is one of those drivers who had so much potential back in 2012. James does have a cousin named Chris Busher who is currently racing for JTG Doctor Racing and has one win in the Cup Series. Busher started his NASCAR career in 2008 and quickly started making moves with Turner Scott Motorsports, a team owned by his father-in-law. Busher started very well, proving he was more than capable of competing well, earning 5 pole awards, 62 top 10s, 31 top 5s, and 6 career wins in the Camping World Truck Series, including one championship in 2012. Busher seemed like he could be a driver to help bring this young team into top-level competition one day, and in 2012, we began to see him some in a nationwide series where he would go on to score some success, including 16 top 10s, 4 top 5s, and 1 win at Daytona in 2012. In 2013, though, things began to change. Turner Scott began fielding a cup car after purchasing the 51 Charter from James Finch, and we began to see drivers like Justin Allgaier and Kyle Larson for this team. James Busher, however, was only seen four times in the 2013 13 nationwide series while going full-time still in the truck series and after 2013 he left the team owned by his father-in-law and i feel as though this is when we began to see the downfall of james busher and turner scott motorsports busher left to go race full-time for rab racing in 2014 and his average finish dropped from 10th to 17th and he only scored two top 10s in 33 races in 2014 the last time we saw james race was 2015 where he only completed in three truck series races. Busher's career offered so much potential, but it just went nowhere. Today, after NASCAR, the 28-year-old former champion finds himself as a successful real estate agent in Texas. So instead of winning $200,000 in a race, he's selling $200,000 houses. <laughs> Dylan Kwasniewski this is another young driver who was kind of plagued by the Turner Scott curse after Busher went away. Dylan honestly offered so much potential to the sport of NASCAR, and in fact, he still should. He's only 22 years old. There's still a lot of time on his racing career. He was very popular too, bringing in a new and exciting sponsor to NASCAR, Rockstar Energy. He offered a new and exciting attitude to the sport. Many people believe that he should have been as good as Chase Elliott or Ryan Blaney, but sadly, his career did not show much, offering a career best finish at 
eighth place in 2014 and only won pole award, but he only had three top tens and 39 starts. However, here's why he offered so much potential leading into the 2014 season. In 2012, Dylan competed in his first full-time season in the k and West Series, coming off of a pretty good first part-time season in 2011, where he got two wins, eight top fives, and nine top tens. In 2012, he did even better, earning three wins, 12 top fives, and 15 top tens en route to the 2012 championship. In 2013, he went out east to run his first year of k and and East Series, and guess what? It was one of the best years of his racing career, gaining 10 top 10s, 8 top 5s, and 6 wins that year en route to the 2013 K&N East Series Championship. He is still the only driver to win both East and West Series Championships in NASCAR. Things, however, went downhill when he made the jump past the Truck Series and into Xfinity Series, but when he did that, it slowed up all of his momentum, posting an average finish of 17th in 2015. We only saw him for six races, and since then, his NASCAR career has been done. Today, much like James Busher, Dylan Kwasniewski finds himself as a real estate agent for Collier's International in Charlotte, North Carolina. So, if you're a rising NASCAR driver moving to Charlotte, contact your old pal Dylan. <laughs> Travis Pastrana Gosh, now this is a guy who offered a ton of star power, but unfortunately just went nowhere in NASCAR. Pastrana is well known for everything involving extreme sports. If it has will, he's competed in it somehow. Pastrana did very good in the world of rally car racing, but his NASCAR stats are less than desirable having starts at Michael Waltrip Racing and Roush Fenway Racing. Here's his stats from Racing Reference. 42 starts in the Xfinity Series with one pole award and four top tens with an average finish of 23rd. After 2013, his results weren't enough to keep his ride full time in the Xfinity Series, and we have only seen him compete in two Truck Series races ever since. One in 2015 where he finished 16th, and again in 2017 where he finished 22nd. So, Pastrana's NASCAR career is definitely nothing to remember, especially when you look at his X Games career. I'm sure Pastrana desires a second chance of a NASCAR, I just don't know if he We'll get it to be honest with you though. <laughs> Scott Bloomquist. Bloomquist is by far one of the greatest dirt late model drivers of all time, and he has held this title since the 1980s, holding over 500 wins in his career. Now, if you see Scott's iconic black hauler pulling into your local dirt track, he's probably coming in at the last second, and you had better be nervous because he's probably going to have his dirt late model towards the front real soon. At 54 years old, he's still in the prime of his dirt racing career, but did you know that Bloomquist does have a small NASCAR career? In 1991, he made three starts in ARCA, posting an average finish of 29th, but an average start of 15th. Three years later, in 1994, he ran in two races in the NASCAR Southeast Series, where he has one lap led, two top fives, and an average finish of third. Not too bad, but oddly enough, one of those two starts was at 411 Motor Speedway, which is now a dirt track. Hmm, very unique, isn't it? Then, after 1994, we would not see Bloomquist's name involved in NASCAR until 2013 when he made his Camping World Truck Series debut for Kyle Busch Motorsports. However, his only Truck Series start? It was on dirt. Of course Scott Bloomquist would want to be a part of the first ever Truck Series race at Outdoor in 2013. However, he didn't run as well as people would have hoped. He started 21st and he finished 25th in this race. This driver in that good of a truck on a dirt track I don't know how he didn't run better than he did. However, as little as there is to Scott's career in NASCAR, I'd personally love to see him try another race at Eldora, maybe even a run on the Super Speedway for Bloomquist. However, he technically still was a NASCAR driver, and probably one that you forgot about too. And once again, that's another list of 5 NASCAR drivers that you probably forgot about. I hope that you enjoyed the video. Make sure that you give the video a like, drop a comment down below on some more NASCAR drivers who were forgettable, and if you're new, make sure you hit the subscribe button and click the notification bell so that you know when I upload in the future. Thank you so much for watching, and have a great day. Bye guys.